So as I mentioned earlier, there are four different ways that we move energy in energy medicine. One of them is shaking. We haven't done much of that, so everybody just do this because our hands need it. We did it a little bit early, bongo drums and then floppy hands, like floppy ears. Good, it just that much. And then shake your knees. So you just glue your feet into the earth, like you're rooted into the earth, and you just jiggle your knees back and forth. Sometimes you have to open your legs a little bit and just so you find a rhythm. And then you bend your knees and you shake your bottom, okay? I want you to feel like the flesh is flying off the bone here. And it's just focus on the hips, just focus on letting it go. There used to be machines back in the 70s, you put a belt around your hips, some of you ladies might remember that, and it did this for you. But the energy needs to be shooken up because we get blockages, so shaking will really help. And it feels really good, put on some good music. And then I want you to do your ribs from side to side. Your arms are gonna be like floppy jello, spaghetti arms. Side to side, that one's not as easy. And then shake your hands, your wrists, your arms, close your eyes, and I just want to shake everything. Hips, elbows, waist, ribs, head. And after a while, you'll see that your body just wants to keep shaking. You get into a spontaneous Qigong kind of rhythm where <laughs> everything just wants to shake off you. Okay, and then we're gonna slow it down. Okay, so shaking is one way to move energy. We did a lot of stretching earlier in the warm-up routine. That's another way, stretching. We massaged, but the tapping, earlier we just did little gentle taps on the face, right, and on the wrists, parts of the body, but now we're gonna do full body tapping. Okay, so we're just gonna raise the arms up and inhale, and cross and open, just weaving the aura. Do one more time, raising the arms up, inhale, and cross and open, cross and open. And then you're gonna curl your fingers. When you're tapping, you can tap like this, or like this, this part of your hand, or like this, it's up to you. So I want you to just do it along with me. It's, your wrist is relaxed, so we're gonna tap the upper chest. So right here is a lung and heart point and breathe, other side, and one, inhale, other side, and a one. So we're wanting to move through any blockages that might be in our lungs or our heart, other side, and a one. So along your whole sternum, there are lung, neuro, lymphatics. So the lymphatic system needs these kinds of movements, like jumping on a trampoline, or tapping, or stretching, or shaking, or to move, other side. Your heart has a pump to move the blood, but your lymphatics doesn't. So we need to do it for it. Just move your hands around your chest. Good. Now your ribs. So you're going right under your chest on the ribs, and now I'm going to bend, so bend to the left like this, and you're going to tap the front of the rib, if you want to open your hands you can, whatever feels good for you, other side. So right on the right side is your liver and gallbladder, and on the left side you've got your spleen, the stomach, and pancreas. Also your diaphragm is over here on the left side. And notice I'm stretching my neck by letting my head be heavy. So I'm stretching and tapping. Five, six, seven. Now my favorite, the tummy. <sighs> so this is doing lots and lots of things. The tapping, another physical benefit is that you're increasing circulation. So you're tapping your belly. And by doing so, you're bringing more blood and chi to your colon, your large intestine, and your small intestine. Open the hands and one. What you're also doing is engaging the abdominal muscles. So it's kind of a fun way of doing an ab workout. But I love that it's stimulating these organs in my low belly. How many do you do? Ideally, 100 a day. 
So we're going to stop it pretty quick, and we're going to go to the groin. Now the groin is the crease, and I, let's try karate chop. So you're using the outside of your hands in your crease, where you bend your knee, and there's a crease there. There's a big lymphatic system happening there. And to the side, and one. So many people complain of hip pain. And again, most of my clients are older adults. But if you're in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, you don't want to have problems and have to take care of them later. You want to get the energy flowing now, keep any blockages from happening. And our favorite place, you're gently patting your bottom and saying, I love you. How often do you tell your bottom that you love it, right? Or your hips? Get used to saying, I love you. Your body will respond. Then you can go side to side. Now, why am I doing this, do you think? Anybody know? Well, if you've never had sciatica, trust me, <laughs> you want to prevent it. This could help preventing it by creating blood flow in the area. Five, six, seven, down the legs. Now, these are meridians. We're going down the gallbladder meridian. And then inside your legs, we're going to come up. There's kidney, liver, and spleen. Then down the front for the stomach meridian. And the back of the ankles and coming up. All the way back, that's a bladder meridian, to your kidneys and say, I love you. I love my kidneys. One more time and a side. Inside, legs up. And I kind of turn my toes out so I can get into the inside of my thighs. Toes forward and go down. Stomach meridian. Back of the ankles. And come up. Good. Kidneys. Now we're going to swing the arms like this. So you're going to swing one arm and tap the opposite kidney. Kidneys right above the waist. Swinging and twisting. I love my kidneys. Breathe, send energy and loving thoughts to your kidneys. In fact, these are all love taps. And it's, a, it's just a good way of self-care, nurturing, and it may seem like you're spanking yourself, <laughs> but you're not. You're sending love by paying attention to it. Wherever the mind goes, energy flows. Five, six. Another neglected area is your armpit. So this, for women, is the area above the breast, close to the armpit, but not the armpit. So a lot of lymph nodes there. And because we wear these contraptions called brassiers, the lymph doesn't flow. So when you get home, take it off. Rub all around your chest, especially where your bra has created marks, indentations. And take the wire out, or fire, find wireless ones if you can. This is one of my favorite things to do. And then you stop, and we're going to focus. So when I first got a mammogram, or I don't know, every five years I have to get one. Now every year, I think. But they said they saw calcification spots. So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to all these places, and I'm loosening up any calcification areas. Deposits, other side. So underarm deodorants, make sure it doesn't have aluminum in it. Not good, use the natural ones or crystals. And breathe while you're tapping. So next time I went back from my mammogram, no crystallized spots on the, on the machine, x-ray that was. And that's when I knew that this stuff was making a difference. Okay, so we're just gonna pat on the chest. This is something we don't do, right? But you're at home by yourself. I want you to do it. I want you to move that energy. Good. And your tummy, and your low belly. Because when you're finished tapping your body, you're just going to go wherever you feel like it needs it, OK? We're going to stop now, but we're going to slow it down again because our hands my hands, look how red they are. They're vibrating. My body is vibrating. I can feel the energy flowing. It's like, it's like a ray of sunshine into every one of my cells. 
just that simple tapping and you don't even need to do that much but feel a ball my elbows are right at my sides but i'm imagining i have a little robin's egg underneath each armpit so they're not squished down there's a little space there my hands are right in front of my navel and i'm holding a ball and breathe just notice your palms close your eyes they might be tingling they might be really warm or might be cool i don't know but i want you to feel this is chi chi is life force energy chi is what runs through us in us around us it's what defines an alive person from one who is not alive, the one who is no longer alive, where the soul has left the body, has no more chi flowing through it. So what we're gonna do is expand that chi by opening the hands. My hands are just rounded. In fact, they're, I'm not doing anything at all. In fact, the, my only job is to think relax. So you're gonna open, relax your jaw, and close. You notice I'm doing a little forward and back motion. That's involuntary. That's the chi. It's decided to come up my legs and sway me. Don't do anything that doesn't feel unnatural. Sometimes no part of my body moves, only my hands. Sometimes my head will bob because I could tell the energy is coming up my spine from the earth. So this exercise is called La Chi and is one of the simplest Qigong exercises that you could learn and practice. All I'm doing is opening and closing. I'm not thinking about my breathing. I'm relaxing my whole body to the point where I could probably stand here for hours with no fatigue because I'm getting all the energy I need from nature. Open and close. So this is for teaching purposes, I'm talking Normally, you should just be sitting in a chair. It's best to do after tapping, I found, because the center of my hand, that point is called Lao Gong, and it is open. And when it's open, the energy is flowing out of both hands, connecting to each other. And by opening and closing it, I'm expanding it. I'm cultivating Qi. Qi is spelled Q-I, but it sounds like C-H. Qi is essential, vital life force energy that lives in everything. Gong means work, practice, or to cultivate. Qigong is just the practice, simply, of cultivating this life force energy to benefit your health. Some styles of Qigong are from martial arts, like Kung Fu and Tai Chi Chuan. But I practice medical Qigong for health. I met a teacher once at the Qigong Center in Hainan Island, where I go. It's a tropical island, very beautiful. And this teacher has been doing this practice for about 25 years. And after her first year of study and training, she lost the desire to eat food. She learned how to live off of chi, which if I didn't see it for a whole month with my own eyes, I probably would not have believed it. But interesting things will happen when you start practicing qigong. You will notice that your special abilities develop. Your intuition gets stronger. Not only will your health improve, but your happiness quotient will expand and improve as well. You will come to know what my teacher, Jian Shi Liu in Hainan, 
calls the sunshine mind. And this is my primary reason for continuing to practice, to learn more, to go to the Qigong Center, to be in a chi field of other people doing this, is because the more I'm in this chi field, the more my sunshine mind is cultivated, where there's no worries, where I trust, where I'm connected with the universe in a way that feels like the biggest gift in the world. You are focusing on yourself. You are focusing on bringing all your energies back into a place of balance and remembering who you really are, that you are a spiritual being, that you are one with source energy, and that you have everything that you need. And this exercise helps me to remember that it's that simple. So practice this at least 15 minutes a day, up to an hour. And when you're finished, and you'll know when you bring your palms onto your navel, women place their right hand first, men place their left first. And just breathe. And know that you have honored yourself today by doing these exercises, these Qigong practices, energy medicine exercises, and techniques to bring yourself into a place of balance and peace so that you again can be who you really are, can live the life that you came here to live, and be the change that you want to see in the world. Thank you.